Hi, everyone. In this first video, we're going to talk about covariance. Covariance is a quantity that gives us some information about the relationship that two different variables have with each other. In this video, we're going to talk about exactly what covariance is, how to calculate it. We're going to talk about what it tells us about the relationship between two variables. And also, importantly, we're going to talk about what it does not tell us about this relationship. And finally, armed with this new information, we're going to tackle a couple of examples that involve the calculation of covariance. So our topic for this video is covariance. What exactly are we talking about when we talk about covariance? Before we actually get into the definition of covariance, let's motivate it a little bit and talk about exactly what we're trying to measure. So say we have a data set with data points x, i, y, i, right? Where we have n points, say. And what we care about is how x and y kind of vary with each other. So let's say we have a case that looks like this, where you have x and we have y. And we have data look, looking like this. So basically, for low values of x, we have low values of y. And as x increases, we see that y increases as well. In this case, it's very clear that there is a positive relationship between x and y. But this doesn't necessarily have to be the case. We can look at um, a different example, potentially, where we have the data looking like this. So for low values of x, we actually have high values of y. And as the value of x increases, we see that the value of y actually comes down. So in this case, we have a downward relationship like this. And it's also possible for neither of these to be the case, right? We could say um, for no matter what the value of x is, we see that the value of y stays fairly constant uh, between, uh, I guess, a particular range. And in this case, we see a fairly flat relationship between x and y. So in each of these cases over here, we say that there's a positive relationship. In this case, we say that there's a negative relationship. And in the final case, we could just say there's no relationship between x and y. So this is exactly kind of what we want to get from the concept of covariance. We want a quantity that will basically tell us, is, are these two variables related? Do they vary positively? Do they vary negatively? Or are they kind of not related to each other? So with that in mind, let's step into the actual uh, definition of covariance. It's basically the measure of the relationship between two variables. So you have a covariance that's typically defined between two specific variables. In other words, you can think of it as a measure of the joint variability of two variables. And if the covariance value is positive, that means that the variables tend to move together in the same direction. If the covariance is negative, that means that they tend to move in opposite directions. Now, covariance is actually very good at conveying the direction of this joint variability, but it is not very good at conveying the strength of the relationship. That is to say, uh, you could have covariance, you could have like a positive or a negative value, or you could have a zero value. And that basically gives you all the information that we saw on the previous slide. But it isn't very good at conveying the strength of the relationship, because uh, the quantities x and y involved are not normalized. And in order for this quantity to actually give you a good sense of how strong the relationship is, this quantity would have to be normalized. Uh, but yeah, with this in mind, with this information about covariance, let's go forward. Um, this is an example of what covariance could look like. So we have over here on the x-axis, uh, the attendance of students in a particular class. And on the y-axis, we have the, store, the score, sorry, that they obtain in a particular examination. And in general, over here, we see that for low values of attendance, we see lower final scores. 
And for, fine, for high values of attendance, we see uh, higher final scores. So basically that shows us that we have a relationship very similar to what we saw in the case, uh, in the positive case that we saw a couple of slides ago. We see that there's a general upward trend, the more you attend class, the higher your score is. And so um, this is something that can be established by our covariance metric. The covariance over here would have a positive value. Um, you can take my word for it now and then we can uh, look at some examples later on to see how this actually works. Now, to be clear, this is just one variable among many that could affect the score, right? There are other variables that empirically for people who study things like this, um, they see that other variables such as parental income, education, et cetera, could potentially affect uh, your performance in class, not just merely your attendance in class. So one thing we could do is we could actually look at all of these independently. We could, um, in the place of attendance on this x-axis, we could replace it with uh, parental income, we could replace it with um, parents' educational background or maybe years of education if we were looking for a numeric value. And then we could uh, kind of find the covariance between each of those variables and the score. And then we could see whether they have positive or negative values or whether they have no impact at all. So over here, this actually gets into the calculation of covariance itself. Uh, so far, we've been talking about positive, negative values of covariance, but now we want to get into the real deal of how do we actually calculate this. So um, we have a formula for variance. We have, um, it's pretty, pretty well known, sigma squared is equal to um, the sum of x minus mu, where mu is the mean, the whole squared, divided by n, where n is the number of samples. So this is our kind of population variance. Um, for covariance, on the other hand, we compute it slightly differently. So we can see the similarities to the above formula. We see that we have xi minus mu x and yi minus mu y. The reason we have both of those is we have the mean for one variable, the variable x, and we have the mean, uh, this is variable x, and the mean for the other variable, variable y. And then we divide this entire quantity by n minus one. Now you might ask, and it's a good question, why are we dividing it by n minus one? And uh, the reason we do that is because it's been shown empirically or otherwise as well, there are mathematical proofs for this, which are beyond the scope of this particular video, uh, but I would encourage you to search for it on Google as well. It turns out that using n minus one over here actually gives us an unbiased estimate of the variance, in this case, the covariance. Uh, there, we can talk a little bit about why exactly that happens. So say, suppose we're sampling uh, data points. Suppose we have an entire population, which is basically data points, um, say on a line, let's keep it simple. Let's talk about one dimension for now. Uh, now, if we were trying to calculate the mean uh, from the sample and we wanted to do this a number of times, we would sample a set of points and say we would sample, uh, let me change the color here, the yellow. So we would sample this, this, and this. The first time we would get a particular value of the mean. The second time, maybe we'd sample this, this, and this, and we would get another value of the mean. So overall, the mean that you get if you do this enough times will be a good estimate of your population mean. Now, that is not necessarily the case for the variance because suppose we had our first sample where we sample uh, point, the, point A, B, and C, we see that the mean for the sample lies, I guess, somewhere in this area. And the mean for the overall population is somewhere around here, say, right? Uh, now, when we talk about the variance, if we're trying to estimate the variance from the sample, we see that there is actually a much smaller variance uh, if we were to consider this as the mean. The actual variance, when you look at the population, uh, the actual variance of the given points is significantly higher because the mean 
is far to the right of these three points. So what tends to happen is that the variance is always underestimated uh, if we do this kind of like sample-based approach. And it's been shown that if you take n minus one instead of n, you end up with a much more unbiased uh, estimate of the variance, or in this case, the covariance. So that was a little bit of a digression. Um, so in this case, we have um, x and y being the independent variables. We have n being the number of data points in the sample. We have mu x being the mean of the quantity x, and mu y being the mean of y, which in this case is the dependent variable.